Now, this war is the fundamental secret pattern of all psychology. Yet again, Steph has discovered an archetype. Here I am to announce a new archetype. This is the archetype of the conscience. It's not like that hasn't been found before and talked about many, many times. And what I mean by that is that it appears consistently in its same archetypical shape throughout all religions of the past and even in the modern day. Because when you're in there confronting the challenge of the ice cream, you are pressured to make a decision and this dynamic play plays out into your head. Now, as I would present it to you as a modern, you don't usually have a good explanation um, centered in your worldview to tell you what's going on here. You run with this idea, this Cartesian dualism, that you are this blob of consciousness in your head and you just rationally figure out what's going on. So when you confront the ice cream in the shop, you think that what happens is you look at the ice cream and you think to yourself, mathematically calculating there in your head, I have eaten four 5,067 calories today. Now that's a very big boil, but let's just assume that you're a big boil and you've eaten 5,000 calories today. And that ice cream is worth precisely 479 calories. And so if I eat that tub of ice cream, I will go over my target of 5,200 calories. Thus, thus I shall not eat the ice cream mind. And then you continue to walk away from that experience, having made a rational decision. Now, this is the, the thesis. This is the idea that the entirety of the world is built upon the political system, the education system and your relationships with people. All of it's built on this, but it's completely wrong. It's completely not true. I am here to start the most radical revolution of all. It's all fake. It's all wrong. It's all bullshit. Everything is done. Everything is I have fixed everything, all right? All you need to do is listen to me. And I'm going to do it with science, as I've done before a thousand times, because when you're making a decision, it's nothing to do with your ability to calculate how many calories something is. It's all to do with your ability to fight urges. That's the great challenge. You will have a dichotomy, a dynamic, a war of urges within your mind, and you must learn to choose the right urge. That's the big challenge. And so what will happen is you'll have that urge coming up from your stomach which will possess or entrance your left brain and get you to explain or rationalize yourself why it's okay and the left brain as we found a million times before is perfectly competent and making up a bullshit story that is absolutely not in touch with reality and it gets possessed. Now, the problem is that if something comes from maybe a lower um, god takes possession of you, that is not necessarily good because you're worshipping a lower god. So what you want to do is you want to be connected with a higher god of sorts. And what's quite interesting is that th it seems like you don't have to follow just one god. You don't have to listen to the urges in your stomach. There are other parts in your in your mind in your psyche other archetypes other gods other forces in your psyche that you could listen to you could for example and um, listen to the best version of yourself as it floats as a disembodied possibility on your shoulder like an angel and says to you if you eat that ice cream you'll get fat and then no girls will want to procreate with you and you won't be able to create the boyo city state like you've been planning and you know this is actually very interesting so it will make you it will make you be prudent it will make you you shove aside the ice cream and refrain from going with your impulses. It will make you see things in long distance. It will make you have a broader perspective on the world. And you can imagine that force as a higher dynamic being. And the question is, where does that come from? Is that stored in the back of your mind somewhere? Is that where, where like, how does that work? That is the strangest thing I have ever heard. This, this unconscious memory or thought or promise to yourself about being something juicy and um, flashes into your mind at the last moment and says, no, don't do it. Now, that's a very, very interesting thing. And I guess I could run with the idea that you're, you've got your left brain, which is this sort of actor in the world, the soldier that rationalizes and explains to itself. Once it gets an order, it will do what it wants to do. And maybe the right brain is like the, the port or the dock or the, 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 the general's room. And if you allow yourself to listen to the wrong general, 
it will it will direct you in the wrong direction. So, so maybe in the general's room you have like the belly and he sits in there in the corner. You've got a little courtroom and you've got the belly there in the corner and he's always like complaining and moaning. It's like, oh, I just want some ice cream. And if you, the soldier, say, oh, that's my favorite general. I'm always going to listen to that one. It will get stronger and you'll listen to it more. Whereas there might be other generals in that room. There might be other uh, leaders in that room. And some of them might be, for example, the, the best version of yourself, you know, the, the higher version of yourself. And that's a very, very interesting thing thing because then you can listen to this but then you have some questions it's like well where does this stuff come from and what exactly can happen like can any general from anywhere in the world just kind of like kick down the door and just walk into this room this general's room and sit down there and take control of the left brain to give orders is that possible and would it be possible for something not necessarily in your mind but something outside of you to get in your general's room and possess you and lead you and that sounds like a crazy idea but it's actually not that crazy at all say for example this is freud's idea of the super ego say for example someone walks in and say your 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 uh, your dad or your you go to the army and your drill sergeant is very very mean and he bullies you into becoming more disciplined and so what will happen is he will form in your mind as a character a voice in your head and so he will be like the, the guy that's speaking to you and you'll feel fear when you go against them you'll be sitting there and you'll uh, you'll see that your your bed is a mess and you'll feel this urge of fear come up because you're scared that if you don't fix your bed the general will appear out of somewhere and come and get you which is a very, very scary thought. So he, it's almost like he lives in your mind, causing fear. He's haunting you in some sense. Now, this is a bit of an issue because that means that he, a figure in the outside world, has managed to get in your head and influence your decision makings. That's a very interesting problem. That's kind of strange. And it kind of puts up this idea that you can have characters in your head trying to pull you around and you, the little left brain that is just rationalizing, want to be a good soldier. You don't really know what's going on all you can do is just listen to whatever is the right one to listen to and they all have intentions and forces now the people of the ancient world took it one step further and we're going to talk about this they believed that sometimes things could come into your mind that weren't just people's ideas they weren't just urges or they weren't just maybe cognitive concepts like the best version of yourself but also disembodied spirits actual gods as they would say now this is a very complicated thing because maybe we would best understand this as an idea or a meme you know a meme comes into our heads but this is not necessarily what these things are they believe them as alive they believe them like animals like conscious entities actually trying to influence the world and they could float into your head and make you do stuff so for example the ancient greek like achilles he was running around and he was insulted by agamemnon and then in came into his consciousness came into his is across from his right brain into his left brain came athena and she told him the goddess of wisdom and strategy don't do that she was like his conscience in that moment she was like the higher more noble general and of course you and then he obviously had the urge of Ares, which is an awful lot like satan which is just to kill his general in front of him and she was his better sense coming in saying be patient now the greeks saw these characters as universal forces that visited everybody patience visited everybody anger visited everybody the Christians deducted something quite similar they would believe that you would have the satanic temptations of your urges and then the Holy Spirit would float into your mind out of your 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 right brain if you wish or out of the general's room and take your ego take your left brain and tell it to do stuff control it in some sense and this is quite a common position a well understood idea you could get possessed by the Holy Spirit at any time in your life and it makes perfect perfect sense when you think about when you make a decision you're there and you're going to reach out for the ice cream and then jesus says don't eat the ice cream or you'll make me cry and then you're like fuck i'm not gonna fucking piss off jesus jesus is a g jesus is a good dude i'm not gonna i'm not gonna make him cry that's the worst and then you pull your hand back and you don't and so then you start to learn quite a lot of things about your temptations and your problems because your problems and your urges are all pulling you to something lower and more decrepit and more ugly whereas this voice that comes in rarely actually has the effect of guiding you in some sense and then this voice wasn't something someone told you but it's almost like some type of disembodied living meme it's like jesus is a meme that lives jesus is a spirit that lives that can enter your body at any point a very interesting thought
Very, very interesting thought.